The next talk. The next talk will be inference of probabilistic programs with moment ma matching Gaussian mixtures. Okay. And the talk will be given by Francesca Randone. No, it's okay, I can read that. Okay. Um. Can we get the slides? Should I plug and unplug? Okay. Sorry for the colors, but I don't know why they're like this. They show up right here, but they're not fundamental, so I'll just go on with my presentation. I'm uh, Francesca Randone. I'm a PhD student at IMT School for Advanced Studies, Luca, and I'm going to present a paper which is joint work with uh, Luca Bortolussi from University of Trieste and Emilio Incerto and Mirko Tribastone from IMT Luca. So before starting, is not going gone. <laughs> plug and unplug. Mm. Also here it's stuck. Maybe I can just do this. Appar apparently it's not transitioning. Yeah, yeah, my screen is going, but okay. on the little screen here, no. Should, do I just said that we on talking for now okay okay now it should go uh, so thanks um, as I was saying before starting I wanted to recall quickly what a probabilistic programming language is and that's just a programming language augmented with primitives expressing probabilistic behaviors such as random assignments which means I assign a variable with a probability distribution uh, probabilistic choice, which means I execute a sub-program with a certain probability p, or conditioning, which means I constrain a given distribution to take values in a certain range. And in our paper, we take the point of view of seeing a probabilistic program as a transformer on distributions. So uh, you can imagine to have a prior or input distribution on your variables, for example, a standard Gaussian distribution, and your probabilistic program acts on the distribution uh, to, transform, uh, to transform it. So that at the end of the execution, uh, you will have a different distribution on your variables, which we call posterior or out output distribution. And it's described by a probability density function f, which is highly non-trivial to compute. And just to give you an idea of this, consider a very simple toy example, just 10 lines of code and very simple distributions involved, uh, independent uh, standard Gaussians. However, uh, even starting from these simple distributions and this simple program, we get uh, a complex out output distribution, where by complex I mean that writing the PDF of this distribution is non-trivial. So we asked ourselves whether we could approximate efficiently the output distribution or at least some moments. And of course, we're not the first one to ask this question. Actually, it's a very well-known problem called the inference problem. And actually, there's a whole bunch of literature dealing with developing efficient methods for this. And this is a non-exhaustive list, uh, but you can see that there's really a lot of work going on and each of these methods are tailored to some kinds of distribution, some kinds of program, some are exact, some are approximate. And our contribution to this is to introduce a new method based on an analytical approximation for which we provide a theoretical framework called uh, Gaussian semantics and also a practical implementation in a prototype tool called uh, SOGA, second order Gaussian approximator. Um, the two distinguishing features of our approach are the ability to deal with both discrete and continuous distributions and the fact that in the theoretical framework we provide formal guarantees on the approximation. Okay, before going into the details of our approach, let me go back to the toy example. 
Um, here I will just show the marginal, but you can imagine also working on the joint distribution. So we start with the uh, independent Gaussian distributions over X and Y, and we enter this if branch with condition X greater than zero. Um, at this point, the marginal over X is not a Gaussian anymore, but a truncated Gaussian. And that's fine. I mean, with a little bit of effort, we can still write the exact uh, PDF of this distribution. But what about uh, when this sum happens? Now, uh, the marginal over x is given by the sum of a truncated Gaussian and a Gaussian. And in general, to write the PDF of this distribution, we have to compute a convolution integral. And we all know that integration is a very expensive uh, operation to perform. So already at this point, many of the um, approaches that I've shown you before would resort to sampling. But we asked whether it was possible to find an approximation that allows uh, to perform this kind of operation, so truncation, conditioning, and arithmetic operation in an efficient way that makes it easy to compute. Um, our answer to this question was, what about Gaussian mixtures? Um, just to recap quickly, a mixture is just a distribution in which you have a finite number of components. And each component comes with its own weight, which is a number between 0 and 1. And in Gaussian mixture, every component is a Gaussian distribution with its own mean and covariance matrix. And we thought that this could be a good um, representation because of properties of Gaussian mixtures, namely the fact that uh, with a simple trick, they allow encoding both discrete and continuous distribution, because you can see a degenerate Gaussian with null covariance matrix as a delta distribution centered in the mean, and the discrete distribution is just a mixture of, de of deltas. So you can see a discrete distribution in some way as a Gaussian mixture. But moreover, uh, Gaussian mixtures are dense in the space of distribution when equipped with the levi prokhorov metric. And this means that for any distribution, you can find a Gaussian mixture which is arbitrarily closed with respect to this metric. So they're universal approximators. And finally, um, computing moments of transformed Gaussian mixtures is quite easy. Why? Because computing moments of transformed Gaussian is. And in this table, I show that for different operations that you can perform on Gaussian, you have theoretical results that allow you to compute exactly the moment of the transformed Gaussian, Gaussians and the four moments of the transformed Gaussian mixtures. So going back to the toy example, um, in the exact semantics, when we enter the if branch, uh, we would have a truncated Gaussian as a marginal over x. Uh, but in uh, Gaussian semantics, uh, uh, instead we use a Gaussian mixture and we choose the parameters of the Gaussian mixture so that uh, this mixture here has the same moments as the truncated Gaussian up to a certain order R. Um, remember that I told you that here I'm just showing the marginals, but actually we do this using the joint distribution. So what we would do in reality is using uh, multivariate Gaussian mixtures. And this has another advantage, which is the fact that when we perform the sum, we're introducing a dependence between X and Y. And using multivariate Gaussian mixtures, we can encode this dependence in the covariance matrix quite easily. Moreover, at this point, computing the sum of a Gaussian mixture and a Gaussian distribution is practically straightforward. Um, this is the whole idea behind the Gaussian semantics, um, which is uh, basically, whenever uh, a non-Gaussian distribution comes out, you just approximate it with a Gaussian mixture by moment matching a certain order of moments. So here, for example, you have a program location PI that would transform the Gaussian mixture G into a distribution D. And I hope I convinced you by showing the table before that computing the moments of D is relatively easy with respect to computing the whole PDF. But once we have the moment, we can just moment match a Gaussian mixture and keep on performing operation on Gaussian mixtures. And here the important job is done by this operator, the moment matching operator, which basically, um, once the moments are compute, uh, finds a Gaussian mixture having, having given moments, uh, and is parameterized by this index R uh, that tells you 
um, well, in which we decide how many moments we want to match. Um, yeah, um, quite a significant part of the paper is spent to um, define this moment matching operator. We do this in a recursive manner so that when we act on a mixture distribution, we moment match each of its components. While when we act on a distribution which is not a mixture, so in some way it's, a, it's an atomic distribution, we just moment match directly uh, the distribution. But to make a long story short, um, we show that it is possible to give a criterion so that this operator is well defined. And what's more important, uh, with this well-defined operator, um, we are able to prove this theorem that tells us that um, when you moment match an increasing number of moments at each program location, the distribution yielded by the Gaussian semantics will tend to the, dis to the distribution yielded by the exact semantics. And here you can see in the graph that uh, the truncated Gaussian, the blue line, is um, approximated better and better but by moment matching two, three, or four orders of moments. Now, until now, I've talked about moment matching any order of moments, but actually it turns out, unfortunately, that when you try to moment match three or more order of moments, things get complicated. Why? Because you have to solve a system like this. You don't really have to go through every question. It's just to give an idea. Uh, so basically, you have to solve a constrained polynomial system of equations, and um, we didn't find a way to do this efficiently. However, when you want to moment match only two order of moments, um, this becomes extremely easy. Why? Because if you, want, if you have a distribution and you want to find a Gaussian mixture having the same uh, mean and covariance matrix, you can just take a Gaussian, and that's it. You don't have to solve any kind of system. So in the tool we present, um, we do exactly this. At each program location, we moment match only um, two order of moments. Um, and so, yeah, our tool, SOGA, just takes uh, as input a script of a probabilistic program written in a uh, certain syntax. And it executes uh, second order Gaussian semantics, returning posterior mean and covariance matrix. Um, in the paper, you will find uh, um, extensive experimental evaluation uh, for our tool. Uh, here we are comparing it for posterior mean estimation with respect to Monte Carlo Markov chain sampling in STAN, uh, posterior quantization performed in aqua, uh, variational inference in pyro, and symbolic exact execution in uh, PSI. Uh, the corpus of benchmark is taken from these tools reference papers. Um, and there are the benchmarks that are currently supported by, by our syntax. Um, and basically, we found out that being able to deal with both discrete and continuous distribution is quite convenient. Because, for example, STAN, AQUA, and variational inference only support uh, in a limited way discrete distributions. Uh, while with respect to the exact symbolic approach, the main advantage we have is that even when this approach goes time out, we are able to, um, to reach a numerical uh, answer uh, using different level of approximations. Um, okay, uh, what I've shown before was about posterior mean, but what about modes? Like mean was kind of expected since our method is moment-based, but are we able to, um, to retain information about the mode or the distribution? Turns out that uh, we are slightly less accurate when it comes to mode, but we are still uh, we still perform comparatively well with respect to pyro. Um, and finally, in the paper, we also show two applications in which our method scales really well. Um, the first class of models is uh, given by models in which mixtures of continuous density functions and discrete probability mass appears together. And here we're co we've compared with Blog, which has a dedicated algorithm for this kind of distributions and variable elimination. And we found out that with respect to program length, uh, our tool was able to scale much better. 
And the second class is given by collaborative filtering, which is a model used in recommendation system, uh, which has this form you see on the top of the slide. And here you usually impose a Gaussian prior. And because of this particular form of the model, our tool performs particularly well on this kind of model. And when compared with Stan, Aqua, and uh, variational inference in Pyro, uh, we found a better scaling with respect to in an increasing number of variables. So to conclude, um, yeah, for more details, I refer you to our paper. And we also have an artifact um, which has been deemed reusable, so you're invited to play with it. Uh, but we're actually working on a tool paper in which we would like to improve the stability of the results, extending a little bit the syntax to make it more usable, and also perform more um, like deeper sensitivity analysis. The final aim would be to uh, integrate our, our method into existing probabilistic programming languages such as Pyro, but I've also heard a lot about Julia in the past few days, so I would be interested in that. Um, and yeah, but there's a lot we can still do, like fitting higher order moments to improve the accuracy, or look into the differentiability of this particular family of semantics, and we're open to any kind of possible applications. So thank you for your attention, and yeah, that's all for me. Can the next speaker come forward? Hi, thanks for the great talk. Um, you mentioned that uh, you're working with second order approximations in, in your implementation and that you can always do that with a single Gaussian. So I'm wondering if you can comment on when your implementation chooses to introduce mixtures with, with more components. Uh, yeah, as I uh, said, okay. Uh, as I said before, uh, the mixture part uh, comes into play when uh, um, because of the recursive definition that we give uh, to the moment matching operator. Basically what happens is that we represent the program as a control flow graph and the mixture comes to play when you have uh, if branches for example because for each path you will uh, moment match the, the component coming from that branch and then you put them together into a new mixture and, do, and you keep on executing the Gaussian semantics on this new mixture. Uh, so yeah. I hope this answers your question. Uh, I have not understood if you have an unbounded loops, how you get the distribution, which is the limit of the distribution for the iterates. Uh, yeah, that's a good question, but we currently don't support uh, unbounded loops. We work with uh, a bounded control flow graph, so that would be a very interesting extension for the future. Okay, so very complex, probably. You have not solved the problem, huh? <laughs> Thanks. Um, can, can you maybe comment, maybe there's some situations where VI performs better, I, I, I don't know, maybe highly multimodal or uh, high dimensional? Yeah, uh, yeah like uh, one thing we found is that at least for uh, the implementation in uh, Pyro, uh, the scaling with respect to the number of variables in variational inference is less um, severe like than with respect to other approaches, I think, thanks to vectorization, but I'm not completely sure. So that could be one reason. Um, but like what we found is that with variational inference, you have to also to be a bit lucky with your hyperparameters. So maybe with some hyperparameters, you can have excellent performance with others. Uh, you don't, while with our method you don't have to do so much tuning, let's say. Do we have any other questions? So when you do the experiment with Pyro, did you use auto-guide generation or did you manually generate the guides? Uh, no, we use mainly auto-guide, I think, except for some models for which we had to uh, manually write the guide. Any other questions? Sorry, this, this does uh, reminds me of uh, something like message passing or expectation uh, propagation. Have you have you compared it to something like infer.net? Uh, well, uh, which uh, underlying the 
uh, yeah, vector graph and uh, massive processing. Uh, no, I'm not really familiar with what you're mentioning. Uh, we compared with variable elimination on some models, but uh, not which I think might be similar, but I'm not really familiar with that kind of literature, so yeah, maybe we can take this offline. Yeah, let's, let's thank Francesca again.